So I have a couple of kind of age-related questions. So the first one of these is uh, hair loss. <laughs> so is hair loss a uh, hereditary thing? Is it a hormonal thing? Um, and is is there anything that could be done to delay it? it it's a great question, and we don't know enough uh, about it, but here's what we do know. Um, is it genetic? Is it hormonal? The answer is yes. <laughs> it's both. It, it's, it's both. Um, and the old idea was that only men could get it because it was somehow linked to the Y chromosome or something like that. That's not it. Um, the, the genes for hair loss are passed to boy children and girl children. What causes those genes to manifest is um, uh, the, the, the hormonal changes that occur um, as kids reach puberty and as they, they age. So if, if a boy got the genes for baldness, but for whatever reason could not make testosterone, let's say he was in a traumatic accident and, and lost his testes, you know, forbid that, but it, it, that has happened. Um, he will never go bald. He's got the genes, but he has no testosterone making it happen. His sister got exactly the same genes. She's not gonna go bald because she never, she wasn't born with testes. She doesn't have much testosterone. If you take her and give her testosterone, she will go bald. If you take him and you give him the testosterone that nature took away or an accident took away, um, he will then lose his hair. Um, so is this changeable? Um, I, just to give a personal story, um, I am 67 years old and I'm one of four boys in my family. And when I was about 30, my mother said, Neil, you're the only boy who's not losing his hair in this family. <laughs> I think that's because you're a vegetarian. I, I was the only one in my family <laughs> who made that shift. Um, and I, who knows, you, you can't really um, argue from an anecdotal case. So we started looking around and in Japan, when the diet was changing and when women started having more menopausal symptoms and when diabetes started coming, I'm talking about the, the end of the, the last decade or two of the, the last century. Mm. Um, and breast cancer came in and, and men were starting to gain a, a, quite a lot of weight. Um, and that would, uh, would, would change their, their, their hormonal milieu. Um, dermatologists started to report more, more baldness. And who knows what's going on? You might think, wait a minute, they should have had less baldness because they probably got more estrogen in their blood. Um, who knows? But something about the hormonal changes that were occurring in some of those countries suggested that um, it might be affecting hair. Long story short, here's what I think can be done. You want, if you're a man, you want a certain amount of testosterone, you do not want an excess. Mm -hmm. um, if you have excess, you might have a lot of muscles and you got no hair. Um, you can eliminate testosterone excesses in the same way as a woman can eliminate estrogen excesses. That's a high fiber diet. Your liver will take that unwanted testosterone, the liver will send it into the intestinal tract and if you have more fiber, it'll just flush it away and it will leave you with the exact amount that you need. So a plant-based diet allows men to, main, to, to maintain their sexual potency. And I am going to guess that it allows them to maintain a head of hair more likely. But, but we, as I say, we need more research on that. So a little thing on that. So fiber, soluble or insoluble, does it matter? Uh, great question. Um, both are, they have slightly different functions. Mm. Um, the soluble fiber, that's the one that people can picture in oats. You know, you put oats in water and you cook them up. They Suddenly they all kind of dissolve into this amorphous mass. That's the, 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 the fiber is dissolving, it's soluble fiber. Whereas if you put wheat or rice in there, it never quite gets so mushy and that's because it's mostly insoluble fiber, but they both play roles um, and they both will affect hormones. Right, okay. So the second kind of age thing was sarcopenia. Now, you know, our muscles get weaker and smaller as we get older even if we work out. So um, is this also related to hormones and, and is there anything that, or, or, or I guess what would be a kind of recommended diet and um, exercise protocol that would help fight sarcopenia? Great, great question. Um, I, I think it's two things. You do want to be in hormone balance and you do need a certain amount of testosterone and without it, um, you will find some that muscles will wither a bit. Um, so, um, let's have uh, Hank, who's been eating cheese and gaining weight, and he has more body fat. 
to the extent that we can follow a diet that eliminates that body fat, that will stop the testosterone loss. Mm -hmm. the, the, again, the testosterone goes into fat cells and the fat cells take the testosterone and dismantle it and they make estrogen out of it. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. So a diet that helps you to get away from, from the, the weight gain will help. Um, and, and, you, and you do want exercise and exercise is often thought of in sort of two ways. One is aerobic exercise, which is good for your heart and the other sort of weightlifting type or uh, resistance. But, th but th there's not really a clear demarcation between the two because if you go out and you run three miles, yeah, you're, you're pumping your heart, but your legs are working and your even your upper torso and all the muscles holding your spine still, they're all working um, to a degree. And so, so I think what matters is exercise that you like mm -hmm. or to the extent that you like it. I have to say, I've become convinced that the runner's high is completely mythological and that you do have to, to like, just do it because you're glad and proud of yourself once you have done it, but schedule it like an appointment with yourself do have regular exercise um, as much as you can do it with a buddy or a, a friend or a spouse or partner or somebody um, because that they're going to know if you don't show up um, right. and that, and that, that, that keeps you, keeps your momentum going. So just on the diet side, is there anything special? Um, actually I'd be kind of interested uh, as you get older, you need more protein. Uh, I mean, so what would you think is the right level of protein? Uh, yeah, um, you, you need more protein, but you really don't need very much um, because keep in mind, your, your body is not breaking down and eliminating protein very much. Um, it will break it down some and the amino acid building blocks that make protein are often then reused. So according to the US government, a man should have about roughly 50, 55, 56 grams of protein per day. For a woman, a little bit lower, maybe 46 grams, something like that. Um, if a man is getting 60, 70 grams of protein per day, I mean, that's just plenty. Mm -hmm. Um, and you easily, you easily get that from plants. Um, and you, the, the reason I emphasize that is that back in the 1950s, when I was a little kid, our whole idea was, um, meat gave you protein, vegetables gave you vitamins and starch gave you calories. And what we didn't realize is that there's protein in the vegetables too mm -hmm. and in the grains. And in fact, if you ate tomorrow, nothing but broccoli, you ate the same number of calories you're eating now, but all you ate was broccoli. You would get about all of the protein that you would require plus an additional hundred grams beyond that, because green vegetables are just extremely high in protein per, per calorie that you get. So hopefully you're not doing that. But um, if you're eating beans and other legumes, like peas and lentils, if you're eating vegetables, if you're mm -hmm. eating grains, those are the healthiest sources of protein because they're not only adequate in all the essential amino acids, but they don't have any animal fat or any cholesterol that's gonna interfere mm -hmm. with, with your, your plans. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. <music>